All right, uh, this is part one of our review of uh, Unit 6, Part 2. This has been a unit about statistics. We've, we've learned about discrete variables, continuous variables, binomial distribution, normal distribution, and a few other things as well. So um, let's get started with our review. Um, this is part one, so part two will be a separate video. Okay, the probabilities that a randomly selected room in a building um, has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 windows are these probabilities respectively. All right, that means 0 goes with this, 1 goes with that, and so on. Okay, fine. Identify the random variable of interest. Well, read it again. It says the probability that a randomly selected room in the building has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 windows. So we're talking about the number of windows. So um, that has got to be the variable here. Um, let me just squeeze this in and print. All right, so x is the number of windows the room has. Then construct a probability distribution and draw a probability distribution histogram. And then we're going to talk about the shape. So uh, when they say uh, make a probability distribution, they're talking about that uh, chart, um, you know, just a table of values where we list the x values and their probabilities. So let's do that. All right, so here comes my probability distribution. Um, we'll have our x's up here on a chart, so that'll be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, number of windows, and then, then with their probabilities, so 0 0.24, 0 0.18, 0 0.26, 0 0.15, 0 0.11, and 0. 0, 6. All right, there is our probability distribution. Now I'm going to see if I can make this shorter to leave room for the histogram. All right, so there you go. Um, now this is going to leave room for my histogram. Maybe I'll scoot it over even a bit more. Histogram will go over here, um, sort of like a bar graph. Just make sure that your bars are touching when you make this histogram. All right, so here comes the histogram over here. Let's take these x values and uh, put them in order across the bottom, starting with 0. And then along this way, we're going to come up with a scale that will allow us to um, get all of our probabilities covered. Now, I'm seeing our highest probability is 0.26. Um, so I'm thinking if I count by 05, you know what I mean? like. Um, let's say that this is 0 0.05, so this is 0 0.10, 0 0.15, 0 0.20, and 0.25. Then our highest value of 0 0.26 will go a little bit above this, but um, uh, I think that'll be okay. So um, now let's get our bars going. So at 0, it goes up to 0 0.24. So it's just going to be a little bit short of this. All right, so there's our first bar. And then uh, we have, the next one will, will be at 0.18. OK, so that'll be uh, below 20 here, between 15 and 20. All right, right about there will be pretty good. And then uh, next we have the 0.26. All right, that's the big one that's going to be uh, right up here. Let's check that out. Kabam, there's a nice 26. Um, then at 3, it's time for 0.15. Should be nice and easy. That one's right on the line, so that's cool. Um, and then 4, we're at 0.11. So that's going to be just over 10. And then 5 windows, probability 0 0.06, just a little over 5. All right, that's the most beautiful histogram I've ever seen. I'm really feeling like I nailed it. Um, okay, we're also supposed to mention the shape of this histogram. And um, see how it gets smaller as it goes to the right? Um, so um, that's going to mean that it is skewed to the right. Always look at the small side if there is one. 
Um, if it's small on both sides, um, then it's symmetric. You know, um, if it's got two humps, then it's bimodal. Uh, but if it's uh, if it's got a tail on one side, you know, then that's the side to which it is skewed. So this one is skewed right. Um, so we'll just write that down. This is skewed right. All right, I've seen all kinds of interesting spelling, so check out how you spell skewed people. Okay, part B. Describe in words the event um, where 2 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 5. And then find that probability. Um, well, this is where uh, the number of windows is uh, greater than 2, but less than or equal to 5. Just like that. Okay, now if I want to find the probability that the number of rooms is greater than 2 but less than or equal to 5, um, I have but to highlight them and add. So greater than 2, not equal to 2. Notice there's no equal to little sign here. So greater than 2 would put us in this area, all right, that means 3 or 4, um, but less than or equal to 5, so it could be 5. So really, it's either going to be 3, 4, or 5 windows um, that fits this uh, description. So um, the probability that uh, one of those three things is going to happen is uh, the sum of those three things. So, yes, um, so we will just say, yeah, uh, 0 0.15 plus 0 0.11 plus point zero six I'm getting point three two out of it okay that's the probability here all right let's move on with our lives and make it count our uh, part C what is the probability that a room has more than four windows well, uh, there's only one chance for that to happen. More than four windows means it has five windows. That's it. So 0 0.06. And we should write our symbols. So we're talking about the probability that x is greater than four. Okay, that's mandatory. You always got to write your symbols, okay? And that equals 0.06. All right, what else? Um, what is the probability that a room has no more than two windows? Okay, some of you guys just mess up on English, okay? No more than two. Does that mean um, two or more? Or does that mean two or less? Yeah, no more than two means um, two is the maximum, all right? But it could be less. So weird symbols, start with your symbols first thing you should write is alright the probability that X is less than or equal to 2 alright I'll give you a couple points just for writing that down um, and you'll lose a couple points if you don't obviously um, now so the probability that X is less than or equal to 2 because no more than 2 um, the, there's only a couple ways that that could happen well there's three it's these three uh, this is our less than or equal to 2 no more than two. Um, so you just got to add up those three things. Okay, so that was, um, so I'm doing 0 0.24 plus 0.18 plus 0.26. Uh, notice how I'm showing my work with this addition and stuff. You have to do this to do the same. It's mandatory. I'm getting 0 0.68. All right, 68% chance of having more than two windows. It's pretty good odds. Um, anyway, what's the probability that a room has fewer than four windows? All right, start with your symbols. All right, the probability that x is less than four, fewer than four. Um, okay, how many ways can that go down? 
Uh, well, fewer than four means not including four. So it's going to be the same thing we had before. Uh, not that. What's going on over there? It's going to be the same thing we just had plus 0.15. I wonder, can I just cut and paste it? Okay, let's see, plus 0.15. So I'm getting 0.83. Show your work, people, mandatory. All right, um, now, okay, calculating the mean and the standard deviation. Some of you guys just did not memorize the formula. Even though I gave you the formula on a little piece of paper, you still didn't get it. Um, yeah, so here we go. If I want to calculate the mean, you need to understand that the mean is um, it's XP plus XP plus XP until I get to the end. Uh, you know, I'm talking about the x value times the probability. So um, in this case, my good people, um, of course the x values are just 0, 1, 2. Okay, so I'm talking about 0 times 0.24. In fact, you know what? I'm going to write it down here and then cut and paste it because it's hard for me to see what I'm doing. Um, so it would be like this. It would be 0 you know what, I think I'm going to even type it, because why not? Because I'm a beast! Let's see if I can get a formula going here, okay. Um, so, my friends, I'm talking about 0 times 0.24. Okay, that's my first XP. And then 1 times 0.18. All right, and I told you if you wanted to, you could do plus dot dot dot, and then uh, skip to skip to the end, and put plus five times uh, 0.06. Okay, I told you you were allowed to do this right here. Okay, so that's why I did it. All right, so of course in the calculator you have to actually type in all six of them, um, but that will give you the mean. All right, you could just type it in just like that. Um, if I were you, I would hit enter in between each one um, because sometimes you run out of characters. Your calculator can only hold um, so many numbers on one line. But um, real quick, I'm going to also remind you how to do this using your um, functions. Uh, your list functions on your calculator. So I'm going to show you that real quick. Look, most of you will probably find it easier just to type all this in your calculator and hit enter. Um, but just in case anybody wants to use the uh, list functions of your calculator, here's how you do it. Um, you're going to want to go to your TI-30 Access MultiView, hit your data button so it's looking like this, in list one, you're just going to put your x values. All right, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, in list two, you want to put your probabilities. Okay, so I'm talking about. All right, it's going to bug me. I'm talking about 0 0.24, 0 0 0.18, 0 0.26, 0 0.15, 0 0.11, 0 0.06. Okay. Now, as you saw, 
Uh, when we calculate the mean, we did x times p plus x times p plus x times p over and over again. Um, so what we need is a bunch of x times p's, x p's. But remember, we put um, all of our x's are in list 1. And all of our p's are in list 2. So when I say x times p, it's really list 1 times list 2. So what we can do is go over to list 3 now and uh, put a function in here that's going to give us x times p over and over again. Um, so we will hit data, switch over to the formula menu, and hit enter to add or edit. Now like I said, we want xp. Now these are x's, these are p's. So L1 times L2. I get L1 by hitting data and enter and I can get L2 by hitting data and choosing number 2. So this L times 2 is really X times P over and over again. So if, if I hit enter, then what I have here in column 3 is X times P. It's 1 times 0.18, 2 times 0.26, 3 times 0.15. It's all my XP's. Now you're supposed to take these XP's and add them up. So we can do that by adding up everything in column 3. The quickest way to do that is by hitting second data or second statistics. Choose one variable statistics. Hit enter. Whoa! I almost went too fast. Um, we want L3. Right now it's on L1. So switch over. Make sure you're doing L3. Okay. And then scroll down until you see this symbol this symbol is the symbol for sum it's a capital Greek letter Sigma so the sum of the of column 3 is 1.89 so that is your mean is 1.89 so uh, either way you have to show your work like this but now we can go okay 1.89 windows okay um, now we need to find the standard deviation. Now the standard deviation, um, well we can't find the standard deviation directly. We have to start by finding the standard deviation squared which is called the variance. And uh, later we'll have to take the square root of that. Now the formula for that is, again it's something we do the sum of a bunch of things, but we're supposed to take each x value subtract the mean that we just found, square that, and then multiply by each probability. Okay, um, so I'm going to start by copying and pasting this and modifying it. Okay, so I'm supposed to have x times the mean. So 0, 1, 5, those are my x's. Okay, so instead of just having 0, I'm going to have 0 minus the mean, which was 1.89. So 0 minus 1.89. And then that's supposed to be squared. OK, and then times the probability, which is that, that was the 24. It's already there. OK, so I'm going to do the same thing to these other two. So this 1 is my x values, but I'm supposed to do x minus the mean. So I'm going to do 1 minus, again, 1.89. And again, that's supposed to be squared. And then times the probability, which is already there. And then one more time, do the same thing with the 5. So this is supposed to be x minus the mean, so minus 1.89. And that's supposed to be squared. And then times the probability, which it already is. OK. So great. So that is a good expression for um, my variance. So I could type all this into my calculator. Again, I encourage you, if you're going to type this in uh, by hand, you're going to want to hit enter in between each little term so you don't run out of space. 
Um, but again, I can use my calculator to help me out. Because once again, we still want list one to be our x values and list two to be our probabilities. All we need to do is change the formula that's in list three. So shimmy over to list three, hit data, switch over to formula, add or edit. So yeah, we'll edit. So uh, I'm just gonna clear this formula. So instead of just being XP, um, I'm gonna be rocking this formula. So I'm gonna be doing X minus the mean squared times P, all that. Remember, X is L1. So instead of X, okay, instead of X, I'm gonna be putting L1. Uh, the mean is 1.89 and P, all the probabilities are in list two. Okay, so it's really gonna look just like this. So here I'm gonna type it in. All right, so it's gotta be um, the X values, which are in list one, minus the mean, which is 1.89, all right, squared, and then times the probability which is in uh, list two. So I can just stick a list two on here. All right, if I hit enter now, it should be, each one of these should be following this uh, formula. So there it is, okay? Each one of these is one of these, like this. If I put that in my calculator, I'm saying I'm gonna get 0.8573. Um, in the end, I'm supposed to take those and add them all up. So once again, I can add these up quickly by hitting second, data, one variable, statistics. Make sure you're on list three. Enter, enter, enter. Scroll down to the sum, which is 2.2579. I'm going to write all those digits down, okay? Okay, now if I want the standard deviation, um, I need to take the square root of this. So the standard deviation will be the square root of 2.2579. Okay, so um, standard deviation. Is 1.5. Oh. Okay, so great. We have our standard deviation and uh, we had our mean. All right, so that was it for part F there. Um, okay, number two. In each situation below, is it reasonable to use a binomial distribution for the random variable x? Give reasons for your answer in each case. Now, as I'm uh, analyzing this, these situations, remember, um, I am thinking about the acronym SPIN. Because if it's gonna uh, be a binomial distribution, it's got to satisfy um, these four characteristics. Um, the S stands for success or failure. Okay, there has to be some something that you could consider a success or failure. Only two possibilities. Um, P stands for probability. and that has to be constant and uh, I stands for independent alright independent outcomes um, and N stands for the number of outcomes is set. Okay, um, let's see if these four things spin, um, hold up for this situation. 
Um, you want to know what percent of married people believe that mothers of young children should not be employed outside the home. You plan to interview 50 people, and for the sake of convenience, you decide to interview both the husband and the wife in 25 married couples. The random variable X is the number among the 50 persons interviewed who think mothers should not be employed. All right, let me stop and think about that. Plus, let me zoom out so I can see it all at once. Look at that good work we've done, people. That's beautiful. All right, well, this first one is really close to being a binomial situation. Um, it hits on everything except for one. Um, you know, there's a success or a failure. Either, uh, either they think uh, mothers should be employed or not. Um, probability is not mentioned, um, but you can just believe whatever is the percentage, um, you know, that's the percentage. So it's not really a problem that uh, probability isn't specifically mentioned, so that's okay. Um, even the number of outcomes is set, all right? They're going to interview 50 people. Um, the problem is this third one, independent outcomes. Uh, because they're doing married couples, those are not going to be independent, all right? Um, the, um, there's a lot going on there in the relationship between a husband and a wife. They're probably going to agree, you know, maybe they've worked it out. And if, even if they disagree, they might not uh, even say so because they might, you know, get in trouble with each other. Um, so they're not independent in the way that um, if, uh, if you just ask people that are not married, who are just free to speak their mind, that's independent. But um, if you talk, ask a husband right in front of their wife or vice versa, they're going to be influenced. Each, each, uh, hus the husband's going to be influenced by the wife and vice versa. So they are not independent. Um, so therefore, um, it's not a binomial situation. Okay, now this other situation where um, a dealer at a casino or something randomly selects 40 cards, okay, from a normal deck. Now he replaces the card after each draw, that's very important. The random variable Y is the number of red cards that it turns out that he uh, has selected, you know, once he gets to all, all 40. Um, if you go through each one of these things in the spin, um, it turns out that this is a binomial situation. Remember, the random variable Y is the number of red cards. So right there, that tells you the success or failure. It's either um, red would be a success or, you know, black. All right, there's only two colors of cards in the deck. It's either going to be red or black. That red would be a success, black would be a failure. So that's covered. The probability, well, there's an equal number of red cards and black cards. So even though they didn't mention the probability, um, again, the probability is implied to be the same. Uh, in this case, we can actually say that the probability um, every time is going to be 50%, 0.5. Um, each outcome in, is independent, all right? Um, because every time we're putting the card back, we're replacing the card. So you're starting over from scratch every time. So each draw is new and uh, will have no impact on the previous, uh, on, on the next one. Um, if you did not replace the card, then it would not be a binomial. If you just kept taking one card out and then taking another, and not putting it back, um, then it would not be a binomial situation because you might start off with a 50-50 chance, but if, uh, if you pull out a red card, 
then suddenly there are fewer red cards left. So the next one will not be a 50% chance anymore. So you don't have constant probability. The uh, outcomes are not independent. But in this case, they are. OK, replacing card. Um, and the number of outcomes is set at 40. Um, yeah, I guess I guess you could write that. Okay, so replacing card means one draw does not affect the next. Okay, that's what independent means. Um, so yes, I guess I should have started by saying a big yes, this is a binomial situation. All right, let's move on. There are 60 marbles in a container. Okay, 19 are red, 23 are white, and 18 are green. You draw a marble without looking four times. Each time, returning the marble to the container. So there's that part that makes it independent again. All right, if you didn't return the marble, it would not be a binomial situation. Anyway, take x to be the number of green marbles that you draw. Okay, four times. Okay, you, you're pulling out, uh, f you're drawing a marble four times. So take x to be the number of green marbles that you draw. Is it binomial? Um, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, going to be binomial. Okay, well our variable is supposed to be, um, what does it say? Da -da -da -da. X is the number of green marbles, so that's a success. So success is green and a failure is not green. All right, those are the only two choices, either green or not green, success or failure. Probability is constant. Um, yeah, those probabilities are, 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 are constant. Um, because we're putting the marble back each time, then uh, the probability of pulling out a green marble every single time is going to be, um, well, there's 18 green marbles out of 60 marbles. So it's, uh, it's 18 out of 60. What's that? 18 divided by 60. All right, it's 0.3. Okay, that's the probability. Okay, um, independent outcomes. Yeah, the outcomes are independent. Um, replacing, uh, I'm going to write this down off camera, but replacing the marble means each draw does not affect the next. And the number of outcomes is set, yeah, four times. Okay, so bottom line is yes, this is a binomial situation. All right, now give the probability distribution and the cumulative probability distribution. All right, okay, and then they're gonna ask us about the shapes. Um, all right, let's do that distribution. All right, uh, well, check it out. There are four maximum green marbles that could be drawn because he's drawing four times. So he could either draw zero green marbles or one or two or three or four maximum. So there's that. Um, now, as far as the, uh, the probability, um, now the probability that he's going to draw zero or one or two um, that's going to be governed by the formula, okay, um, that we know about. 
it went like this. Let's do, let's see, let's just pick one of these. Um, I'll do this one. Okay, let's do the probability that it's going to be 1. Um, remember, it, there's th three parentheses to it. Okay, and we're doing this one right here. First of all is the combination. All right, there's four total possible outcomes. All right, um, so it's going to be four, choose something. And right here we're talking about one, all right, one success. So that's the first set of parentheses. The next two are probabilities. Okay, um, the probability of success, uh, we already decided was 0.3. Okay, remember how we uh, decided that? Because um, it was 18 green marbles out of a total of 60. So every time you reach for a green marble, there's a 0.3 probability. Um, all right, so this parenthesis is too big. Okay, and then there's the probability of failure, uh, which is going to be 0.7. Okay, think 30% and 70%. If there's a 30% chance of success, that means there must be a 70% chance of failure, all right? The total has to be 100%, all right? So um, that's where the 0.7 came from, okay? Or I guess you could think of it as 1 minus 0.3 if it makes you feel better. Anyway, um, each one of these probabilities is going to get a power. Um, the probability of success is going to, the power will be the number of successes which in this case we're shooting for and talking about one success now there's a total of four so that means one success and three failures okay um, so if I put this in my calculator it's going to give me this first probability let's go ahead and do that real quick okay in my calculator so I'm, it was four choose one so I do four and then I hit the PRB button, and then the choose is option two, and then one, so it's four choose one. And then the probability of success was uh, 0 0.3, and then the power um, was the number of successes, one. These are always the same, one, one, two, two, three, three, whatever it is. Um, anyway, now comes the probability of failure, which was 70%, point seven and the power was the number of failures well there's a total of four so again there's one success that means there must be three failures in that case um, so I just hit enter and I get point four one one six okay so that's why this is you know what let me type it in uh, but that's why this is point four one one six okay and we would do that over and over again um, you know four more times to find the others um, or you could use the feature of your calculator uh, the function list feature so that's what I'm going to do right now um, since we know it's a binomial situation if you go to the table um, we're going to have to clear out some stuff. Um, let's see. So let's clear out list three first. And then let's clear out list two second. Um, okay, now list one is supposed to be zero through four. There's a five in there. Okay, I had to get rid of that. So there I go, zero through four. Now list two, I'm going to use a, a formula to generate all these probabilities. So, if I had data, I head over to formula. I'm going to add a formula. Now, I'm just going to type in what we had um, here um, but with one small change. Look, guys. Um, okay, why is my pen not drawing all of a sudden? Fail. Oh, no. It's crashing. When I put this in the calculator, it's going to look like this. Um, the 4 would not change no matter um, which one of these x values I were looking at, because 4 is the total. 
Um, now, this 1 would change from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, I put all the zeros and 1s and 2s and 3s and 4s into list 1. So, um, wait, that looks like a 4. Let me try that again. I say it list 1. So um, I'll put list 1 here for that. And then um, the point 3 is not going to change. But again, these numbers are going to change depending on which one I'm doing. So um, this power will always be list 1. All right, if I'm on 0, it'll be 0. If I'm on 1, it'll be 1. But these are the values in list 1. This next probability will always be 0.7, you know, uh, no matter which x value we're doing. But, um, and here's the tricky part to remember, the power is always going to be the total minus whatever you did on the first uh, parentheses. So it'll be uh, 4 minus list 1. And because it is a difference, you know, 4 minus list 1, it must be put in parentheses. So this is the calculator version uh, for the formula, the list formula. So um, like I said, we're going to do four choose uh, and then list one because we want all of them. All right, so four choose list one. That's the first set of parentheses. Then comes the 0.3 probability to a power of list 1. Okay, and then comes the probability of failure, which is 70%. And then to a power of, and don't forget the parentheses, please, and it'll be the, the uh, total minus um, whatever we uh, did for the successes, which was uh, L1. So 4 minus L1. All right, that's the hardest part to understand why I did what I just did. All right, but anyway, that's going to generate all of my probabilities for me. So, um, so I've got 0.2401. All right, I guess I can just type, I'm going to type these in. 0.2401. Um, okay, now's a good chance to see if we were right uh, before. So we calculated this one by hand, and, and uh, here I've got 0 0.4116. 0 0.4116, so it holds up. Okay, and then the next one should be 0 0.2646. 3 probability of 3 marbles is 0 0.0756. Okay, uh, the probability of picking 4 marbles, all 4 marbles, um, is going to be pretty small, 0 0.0081. Okay, so that is how you can get the probabilities. All right, if you're uncomfortable with the whole list thing, then uh, you can just do this calculation over and over again, one at a time, by yourself. Now, cumulative probability is really simple. Um, it's just going to be the sum of all the probabilities so far. So when you first start off, it's just going to be the one right above it. So 0 0.2401. Now when I get to this position, um, it's got to be the one above it plus the one before it. All right, It's the sum of all the probabilities so far. OK, so all right, if I add these two up, I'm getting 0.6517. Okay, um, the next one has to be the sum of the one above it, all right, plus the two that came before, because it's uh, the total probability up until this point. So, of course, I'm hoping you understand that uh, since, the, uh, since the previous number right here is already the sum of these two, all I really have to do is add up these two. 
So in other words, if I take this and I do plus 0.2646, that's going to give me the new probability, so 0 0.9163. All right, and again, this is the total so far, so all I have to really do is add the new one. So I'm just going to add these two together. Okay, so 0 0.9163 plus 0 0.0756. I'm getting 0 0.9919. And then one more time. This is the total so far, plus one more. So plus 0 0.0081. And I, of course, am getting one. All right, because this spot, this cumulative probability, represents the sum of um, all five of these numbers, all of the probabilities. And we know that they are supposed to add up to one. So it all it checks out, sort of self-checking, if you will. All right, moving on to part C. Let's see, I'm running out of space. Okay, what's the probability that you draw five? Wait, hold on. Um, we're supposed to say what's the uh, shape of the of the histogram and the cumulative cumulative histogram. Um, let's see if we can visualize the shape without drawing it. Okay, so this is starting off at 0.24 and it's going up to point, you know, like I'm just, look look at the first uh, couple digits. Okay, so I've got 24, I've got 41, I've got 26, I've got 7, and I've got zero. Okay, so um, I can visualize that it's it's basically it's doing this, and then it's going higher, and then it's coming back down, and then it's getting lower, and then it's getting lower. Okay, so it's doing this type of thing. So um, I would definitely say that it is skewed right, <clears throat> the original is skewed right. So um, I think we can just tack that on to the end that this is skewed right. Alright, even without drawing it you can picture it. Now in the same way this next one, um, you know, it starts off small with a 0 0.24, 0 0.65, 0 0.91, 0 0.991. One. Alright, like 100. Um, so hopefully you can see that this is like starting small and then it gets bigger and then it gets bigger and then it gets bigger and then it gets bigger. It's just getting bigger and bigger every time. Um, so the small end is to the left. So this uh, the cumulative probability distribution is always going to be skewed left. <clears throat> Okay, so you, you usually can tell even without actually drawing the histogram. Anyway, now let's move on to C. Okay, what is the probability that you draw two or fewer green marbles? Don't forget your symbolism. Two or fewer, that is the probability that X is less than or equal to two. Um, okay so two or fewer. So um, we're just talking about the sum of all of these but we've already added those uh, when we did the cumulative so we already know it's 0 0.9163. Okay, um, you should so show some work though. So 0 0.2401 plus 0 0.4116 plus 
equals 0.9163. Okay, what is the probability that you draw three or more green marbles? Okay, three or more green marbles. Um, so um, that's just going to be this over here. Here's three or more. Um, so we're going to add up those two, but first the symbolism. That's the probability that x is greater than or equal to three. Okay, so if I add these up, 0 0.0756 plus 0 0.0081, I'm getting 0 0.0837. And you know what, I should write down the sum, 0 0.0756 plus 0 0.0081. All right, ne now um, what's the probability that you will draw from one to th three green marbles? And um, it doesn't say between, so we're including the one and the three. Okay, um, so one to three, so that would be from here to here. So we're just adding up these three numbers. All right, first um, look how you write the symbols. From one to three, you know, including one and three would be like this. The probability that one is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to three. Okay, um, like I said, we're just gonna add up these numbers. So 0.4116. plus 0.2646 plus 0 0.0756. All right, that is 0 0.7518 probability. Okay. Um, now, time to calculate another mean and standard deviation. All right, it's just like we did before. Remember, the mean is going to be the sum of all of your XP's. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be. All right, I'm going to put it up here. Um, it's going to be. In fact, I think I'll type it. So it's going to be all the x's times p's um, and add it over and over again. So it's 0 times 0 0.2401 plus 1 times 0.4116. All right, after you do the first couple ones, you can do plus, dot, 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 plus, and then skip to the last one. Okay, and that last one's going to be 4 times 0 0.0081. And uh, what does that give you anyway? Uh, you know what, I'll worry about that later. Well, I know, shall we practice putting it in our calculator one more time? Um, even though the list is short, so it would be uh, pretty easy to do it by hand, it's good practice. So. Um, to the TI 30XS multi-view. Now, um, let's clear out this list too here. So data two clears out that list. Now list one should just be zero, one, two, three, four. And it is, all right, so that's great. Now um, in list two, for this procedure, we need uh, the probabilities. So we need um, point 2401 and 0.4116 
and 0.2646. and 0 0.0756 and 0 0.0081 all right now we've got all the probabilities in now um, like we just saw For the mean, we just uh, we do all the x's times the p's. So in this case, it's going to be list one times list two. So um, we'll let uh, list three be the formula. So if we had data, switch over to formula, add a formula, and um, x's and p's. So list one, so data list one. Okay, times list two, so data and two. All right, so these are all my x times p's, x times p's. And uh, we need to add all these up, so easiest way to do that, second data, one variable statistics. Make sure you're on list three, so that's where your data is. And then go down to the sum symbol, which is right here, that's 1.2. Okay, so our mean is 1.2. All right, it's genius. Okay, um, I'm going to have to cut and paste this down below. I'll be right back. <clears throat> All right, so that was the mean. Um, now it's time to uh, find the standard deviation. Now remember, we, we can't find the standard deviation directly. Um, so what we do is we start with the standard deviation squared. That's called the variance. <clears throat> and uh, the formula for that, I guess I should write that down. Um, the formula for the variance here is um, we do the sum of all the uh, x values minus the mean. We square that and then multiply times the probability. So that's what I'm going to set up in, inside of here. Okay, um, the 0, the 1, the 4, those are x values. So uh, when I want to do x value minus the mean, I'm going to do 0 minus, and we just found the mean was 1.2, so we're going to use it. And then that's supposed to be squared, and then times the probability. Well, this is the probability, so I'm just going to leave that alone. And now this one, again, it's supposed to be x minus the mean, 1.2 and that's supposed to be squared times the probability it's already there and then you're allowed to skip ahead to the last one but this 4 is an x value and it's supposed to be minus the mean of 1.2 and it is supposed to be squared times the probability which is already there okay and you could put this in one by one but again, um, the calculator's already done half the work for us. Um, we can use this again. Still, list one will be all the x values. List two will still be the probabilities. All we need to do is change um, the formula in list three. Okay, so data formula. Okay, so instead of being list one times list two, it's going to be this stuff. Um, list 1 minus the mean squared times list 2. Okay, so we will do um, list 1 minus the mean, which is 1.2. And that's supposed to be squared. And then times the probabilities, uh, which are list 2. All right, so that's the formula. Okay, so now this is um, all of those calculations. And uh, we're supposed to find the sum of these. So that's easy if you do second data, one variable statistics. 
make sure you're on list three and scroll it down for your sum. Point a four. Okay, so this is the variance, don't forget, not the standard deviation. All right, so here they are side by side. You got your mean, you got your variance, okay, 0.84. But remember, if you want your standard deviation, you need to take the square root of this. All right, so if the variance is 0.84, the standard deviation is going to be the square root of 0.84, which is 0.91. Six five. So now we've calculated the mean, which is 1.2, and the standard deviation, which is 0.9165. Okay, um, I think we're getting almost to the end. Let's just do problem number four. All right, this one sounds a little bit tricky. Um, the distributions of grades on a certain quiz follows approximately a normal distribution. Now a score of 3 on the quiz had a z-score of negative 2. Okay, um, so let's see. So they're saying a quiz score of 3 goes with a z-score uh, maybe I'll just even set them equal to each other. Equals a z-score um, of negative 2. So these two sort of go together. And then they say um, a quiz score of 8 has a z-score of 0.5. Okay, fine. A quiz score of 8 matches a z-score of 0.5. Now, um, you guys remember the formula for z-score is like this. z-score is equal to the value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay, um, so, um, let's break this down into X's and Z's. Come back to that in a second. So in this first situation, what we have is um, the quiz score of 3. So we have, um, we have X, let's call this X1 is 3. And let's call this Z1 is equal to negative 2. Now, quiz score again is x. So we'll say we'll call this x2. x2 is equal to 8. And uh, z2 is equal to 0 0.5. Okay. Alright, if I use these in the formula, okay, um, watch what happens. Um, okay, so you know, using the formula that z is equal to the x value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, okay? Then what I have is negative 2 equals 3 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, okay? And just for space, I hope you don't mind if I just erase this and shift it up. Okay, similarly, this one over here um, is going to give us 0 0.5. The z is going to equal the x value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So we have two equations and two unknowns. So we're going to have to do some substitution here, guys. All right, um, let's say if we multiply both sides by the standard deviation first of all. And that way these are going to cancel out. Then that's going to give me negative 2 standard deviation 
is equal to 3 minus the mean. Okay. Um, now, if I uh, subtract 3 from both sides, then I've got negative 2 standard deviations minus 3 is equal to the negative mean. Now, if I divide everything by negative 1, all right, essentially changing the signs of everything. Then what I get is um, the mean is equal to two standard deviations plus three. Okay, I just got the I just got the mean by itself. Now I'm going to flatten this out a bit before I do my substitution. So um, watch me do the same thing again. I'm going to multiply both sides by the standard deviation. So that's going to give me 0 0.5 standard deviations equals 8 minus the mean. Okay, um, I think I'll do that same thing by getting the, getting the mean by itself um, once again. So if I do that, Watch me subtract this 8 from both sides. So that's going to give me, whoops, it's supposed to be a 0, not a standard deviation. So that's going to give me 0 0.5 standard deviations minus 8 is equal to negative mean. Once again, if I divide everything by negative 1, And what I get is um, negative 0.5 standard deviations uh, plus 8 is equal to the mean. Okay, now can you see how the mean is equal to this and the mean is equal to that? Alright, um, that means they both must equal each other. So these two expressions I've circled, they must be equivalent. So I can just set them equal to each other and solve. I'm going to do that over here. Okay, so what I've got is two standard deviations plus three must equal negative 0.5 standard deviations plus eight. All right, I'm setting these two equal to each other because they both equal the mean. So all I have to do is solve this. Um, let's add the 0.5 standard deviations to both sides. All right, 2 plus 0.5, well, that's 2.5. <clears throat> So now I've got 2.5 standard deviations <coughs> plus 3 is equal to 8. <coughs> Subtract 3 from both sides. And I'm getting 2.5 standard deviations is equal to 5. 5 divide both sides by 2.5 um, let's see 5 divided by 2.5 that's 2 Okay, so the standard deviation is 2. Now, if I want to find the mean, I'm, I'm, I just need to take the standard deviation and plug it back in. Uh, I could plug it into either one of these, but I'm going to look, I'm going to use the blue one because it looks simpler. Okay, so um, now the mean 
according to the blue one, is uh, two standard deviations plus three. All right, so that means the mean is two times two plus three. All right, because we just found that the standard deviation was two. So of course that's four plus three, so the mean is seven. All right, and that's what we were supposed to find, the mean and the standard deviation. So the mean is seven, the standard deviation is two. All right, that is the end of this lesson. Um, it's a really long lesson, and I'm, you know, it's like 2.30 a.m. for me. I'm wiped out, guys. I will see you on the next video.